Another peculiarity related to the radio age and tribalization behind us, it's easy to see this now, it's way back there in the rearview mirror. But when the Jazz Babies reached the job plateau and began to make decisions, we suddenly discovered that they didn't have any goals. The radio age, the ear age, doesn't have goals. Only visual men have goals. People who play the total field auditory style, and this is true of any tribal society, such people don't have goals in any sense whatever. They are living. The old Porgy and Bess theme, I got plenty of nothing, and nothing's plenty for me. This was the immediate prelude to the big slump. When you put a bunch of jazz babies into the decision-making positions, they suddenly discovered they didn't have any goals. And the Depression followed at once. That was just radio. In ten years from now, or six years, or five, the Depression that we're preparing for ourselves, when the TV generation reaches the job plateau, will be, correspondingly, greater. The TV generation does not have goals because, man, they're living with all of themselves. No goals possible. The dropout is simply a person who has discovered that there's living. Why should he interrupt his education by going to school? This is what they say in Watts. This is a common phrase in Watts. Why should I interrupt my education by going to school? And this is the great message of the turned on TV age. When you program the whole environment richly as educational machine, why go into that little nook or cranny called a schoolroom where you're going to be broken into little bits and study algebra? You're going to get rid of all your audience right now, you know? <laughs> Oh, you mean that? I, I'm, you, you, I hope you don't imagine that I'm, I'm advocating or favoring any of these developments. I regard the 20th century with horror. <laughs> but I don't see any alternative but careful study for survival. Yeah. All right. That was the that was the age of uh, age of Jackson. That was the age of rail. Um, the War of 1870 was fought by rail. The Civil War between the states here was the first railway war in human history. It was fought by rail, and it was fought because of the rail. Because the South was completely opposed to railways and the lineality of the machine age that was coming upon them. And the North was pushing this new mechanized reality over them. The South was an agrarian tribal area where life was, was rich. My wife is a loyal Texan. I, um, I re I've always had a very large admiration for Southern culture. But uh, every, after all, Nostalgically, the whole of North America is devoted to the South. As the, the world of uh, all the great songs and dances, whatever. But this was a world where people lived. They didn't do things. They didn't have goals. They didn't get anywhere, you see. The North had goals. Yep. Yeah, for Vietnam, for example, if you try to say Vietnam is a goal, people say you're crazy. Commitment is not 
goal-oriented. It's involvement. You don't ask a man uh, in swimming, um, what's your point of view with regard to swimming? That's meaningless. When you're really committed or involved, you can't have a point of view. I have a friend who spent the past year in Tanzania, and the first question I asked uh, this very literate liberal uh, when he came back from Tanzania, I said, do they have a point of view? And he said, absolutely none. No tribal group can have a point of view. They're committed. They're totally involved. You can't have a point of view when you're committed. It's like Christian charity. A Christian charity is not a point of view. It's total. Now, we are in the position of being able to make a responsible choice in this particular decade about whether we want to program any part of the world from now on for civilization and visuality or not. Because if we allow the natural development and push stress of our technologies to continue, there will be no visual area left in the world in, say, 10 years. There will be no civilization of any kind whatever in 10 years. Now, it's up to us. We're doing this to ourselves. No one's doing this to us. We're doing it to ourselves. And so we are in a position of being able to program the environment as a teaching machine. War is the use of the total environment as a teaching machine. The classroom uses just one little bit of environment as teaching machine. But war uses the whole culture as teaching machine.